Welcome back to Low Stress Math with Mrs. Bono. We're counting down to the end, final review number three, chapters four through six, functions and systems of equations. This is quite a long chapter, so I'm gonna stop in the middle and we're gonna have a part two. But let's start at the top with key concepts and vocabulary. Slope. Slope is the angle of the line or line segment that you're looking at. And it's generally, from a graph, rise over run. And it's the difference in y values divided by the difference in x values. We're gonna do a lot more with that. The y-intercept is where the line intersects the y-axis. Makes sense. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And I'm just gonna write that up here y equals m x plus b. m is the slope, the angle of the line, and b is the y-intercept where the line intersects the y-axis. Domain is the x values, and range is the y values. And I remember it because x comes before y, D comes before R, so domain is X, range is Y. Input, output, still alphabetical. Input is the X values, output is the Y values. Function, Y equals MX plus B is the only function we're really gonna deal with, but a function is a relation, a set of ordered pairs where the X values do not repeat. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs, one, two, three, four, one, seven, eight, two. Now that's just a relation. It's not a function because that value one repeated. So a function is a relation, like a square is a rectangle, but a function is special because the X values don't repeat. Input and output, same as domain and range, X, y, X values and Y values. Linear function is a function whose graph is a line Vertical line test is, remember you could draw vertical lines and if it only touches the graph once, it's a function. Nonlinear function, still a function. The X values still don't repeat. It just does not look like a line. It could look like a U, it could look like a you know, curly Q wave. Mm. And a mapping diagram is where you start to where you end. We're gonna do a lot with mapping diagrams in the next review which is the transformations. So slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. X coordinate is the domain or the input. Y coordinates are the range or the output. Rate of change, that's another way to say slope. Sometimes they'll even say constant rate of change. It all means slope. And the slope formula which we're gonna use is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So down here it says, which graph represents a function? Now the background, the grid, sometimes called the coordinate plane, that's not the graph. The graph is the actual picture that's on the grid. So this circle, this vertical line, this U shape, this sort of, I don't know, sideways V, those are all graphs. Now a vertical line test is when you can draw a vertical line and it only touches the graph one time. So vertical lines are the ones that go up and down. So I'm just gonna trace this vertical line and oh darn it, look, it touches twice here and here. So this fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. Why? Because it touches the graph twice. Now look, if I draw this vertical line, wait, it's already a vertical line. Yeah, that's the problem. It touches once, twice, three, every point touches. This is definitely not, big not, a function. For this one, I could trace every single vertical line 
and it would only ever touch the graph once. Look at that, all those vertical lines, and every single one of them only touches the graph one time. So this is definitely a function. Even though it's not a line, it doesn't have to be. This is a non-linear function. I'm glad I found this pink pen, I like it. Okay, over here, <laughs> bad bono, getting distracted again. Here we go. If I trace this line, it touches twice. Oops, not a function. Definitely not a function. All right, so write a linear equation with a slope of negative four and a y-intercept of seven. So slope is m. So this would be m equals negative four and b equals seven. So a linear equation is y equals mx plus b, y equals negative four x plus seven. So that is a function in y equals mx plus b form. Which relation is not a function? Remember, in order to be a function, the x values cannot repeat. So I'm only gonna look at the x values. I'm gonna grab my highlighter and I'm gonna highlight all my x's. So one, two, three, four. That's a function, the x values don't repeat. Four, two, negative three, positive three. That's a function, the x values do not repeat. All right, how about this one? Negative one, positive one, two, and one. Oh, that's a problem. Look, this one, this x value repeats. That's not a function. How about this last one? What do we got here? Negative one, five tenths, five, and two. So that is a function. So the only one that's not a function is C. Find the slope of a line that passes through the points negative five, seven, and three, negative four. So we have to go back up to the top, do, 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 and I'm gonna use the slope formula. So if you're gonna use a formula, you gotta write the formula. M equals Y to the set, Y, we talked about this, it's a subscript. When it goes up, it's called a superscript. When it comes down, it's called a subscript. So y subscript two minus y one over x two minus x one. And now I gotta pick an x and a y one. So I'll call this x one and y one. And then the other one can be x two and y two. And you're gonna subtract negative four minus seven over three. And the problem here is that's a negative five. So you are in fact subtracting negative five. Ugh. I don't like that. I'm gonna rewrite it. I'm gonna change it into adding negatives. So, Keep change to change. Negative four plus negative seven over three plus, keep change, now that sign changes to positive five. All right, four plus seven is 11. Three plus five is eight. So my slope is 11 over eight. That's a weird slope, but I'm gonna keep it, it's fine. Which equation describes the table? So, in order to do this, you need to find the change in y over the change in x. And the change in y, we're gonna call that delta y. And the change in x, we could call that delta x. And you can do that right from the table. How do I get from negative 11 to eight? Well, I would add three. How do I get from negative two to negative one? I would add one. So my change in y, my delta y, would be three, 
and my change in x, my delta x, would be 1. So my slope here, m equals 3. And I come over here and I look, ah, the only one with m equals 3 is d. We'll get back to the y-intercept in a second. If you can't remember the change in y, blah, 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 you could still do x1, y1, x2, y2, and subtract and do it that way. What are you talking about, crazy old woman? Well, it would be y2 minus y1. So remember that formula that we had? y subscript 2 minus y subscript 1 over x2 minus x1. I could use these numbers here. And then it would be 1 minus negative 2 over 2 minus and make it a fraction but all. One. One minus negative two, three. Two minus one, one. This is three over one. Ah, it's the same m equals three. I get the same answer. And this one I'm using the formula and this one I'm just trying to remember stuff. Now, the key here though is also the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the y value when x equals zero. I'm going to say that again. The y-intercept is the y value when x equals zero. So if you have x equals zero, then you have the y-intercept, which here would be negative five. And it shows up right here as negative five. But I didn't need to do everything. When it's multiple choice, and there's only one answer with the slope that you found, then that has to be your answer. There's two answers here that have negative five as a y-intercept, but only one of them has the three as the slope. So that's definitely the answer. The next one says, determine the function for the table to the right. Okay, I'm gonna do the same delta y. Oh, look at that. There's no zero value but I can make my own zero value. I'm gonna work backwards. What are you talking about, crazy old woman? I'm gonna go backwards, why not? I'm gonna make my own zero. So, four, three, two, one, zero. Five, nine, seven, wait, sorry, 11, nine, seven, five. Going this way, it's two. So that would make this three. So now I know my B is three. Because if I'm going down, three plus two is five, five plus two is seven. So I'm adding two. Seven plus two is nine. Nine plus two is 11. So if I work backwards, that's the other way to do it. One, adding one, adding one, adding one. So my slope, my change in y over my change in x, 2 over 1, my slope here, m equals 2, m equals 2. Using this equation, y equals m is 2, x, b is 3, plus 3. All right, not bad, not bad. Using the function from part A, what is the value of y when x equals 9? So I have to use this equation. That's a function rule. Function rule is another word for equation. Or equation is another word for the function rule. So I'm going to use that. y equals 2x plus 3. And I'm going to substitute 9. y equals 2 times 9 plus three. I could just toss that in a calculator or I could use my little brain. Two times nine is 18, 19, 20, 21. Y equals 21. So when X is nine, Y is 21. I could also write that as a ordered pair 
9 comma 21. Which of the following are linear equations? All right, this one we have to talk a little more. In order to be a linear equation, you have to have an exponent of 1. That's the only exponent. So linear equations have an exponent of 1. And as you can see, there's no exponent here, so you could put your own one. You could put your own one. You could even put a one on the five. That is definitely a linear equation because all the exponents are one. But look at this. I have x in the bottom. Ugh, you can't have that because if I want the x in the top, it would be y equals negative two x to the negative one. Negative one is not the same as one. So this is definitely not a linear equation. Up, oh, this exponent is two, not a linear equation. Ah, let's come over here and look at this one. Y to the first, X to the first, four. this is also a linear equation. So all, look at that, there was two answers. Thought it was a multiple choice problem, thought we had only one answer, but we don't, there was two. All right, rewrite the following in slope intercept form. Oh, that's kind of like the homework you had last night. So let's do this. 3y equals 2x minus 12. Well, in order to change that into y equals mx plus b, I have to get rid of the coefficient of y. So let's divide everybody by 3 to get rid of that coefficient. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so the y stands alone. 2 over 3, keep the fraction, 2 thirds. x minus 4 divided by 3, 4 divided by 3. Did it in my head too fast. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Hey, look at that. Yay, puffy clouds of happiness because that's the solution. All right, over here. Well, I cannot have x and y on the same side. That's not going to work. So to move the x to the opposite side, I have to do the opposite operation. So I'm gonna add two x to both sides. And I put my line here. Well, negative two x and positive two x is zero. Bring down negative y. Ugh. I'm gonna add a one in here so that later on when I wanna get rid of that negative, I have something to work with. And now what goes first? Well, if I want it in y equals mx plus b form, I kind of have to put the mb first. Sorry, mx, what am I babbling about? Here we go. So 2x plus six, because I want the x first. Now I cannot have an, a coefficient of y. I can't even have a negative one. So I'm gonna divide everybody by negative one. And that is just a lot of negativity, Bono. Y equals negative 2x minus 6. All right, that's enough of that for today. Try the next two pages, and the next video will give you the answers. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.